how to tap into God's love. And this transcends the individual. A lot of this has to do with transcending the individual personal sense of self. It doesn't mean you lose it. It just means that you gain a whole nother dimension of experience in addition to what you already know on a day-to-day -day basis with your ordinary mental focus on your physical body and the world around you and the people in your life and so forth. We're going to add a dimension of love, a dimension of unconditioned being to that equation, which will help stabilize and empower your life. The other aspect is that which I've called the state of your destiny fulfilled, the destiny fulfilled state or the destiny accomplished state. And this really kind of blurs the line between the individual and the God state or God's love. It blurs that line, so to speak, that threshold by really give, giving you access to a potency, a power that yes, is individual to you in many ways, but it's plugged into that motherboard of that universal power, that universal strength, so that you can, in the midst of everyday life, you can stay, you can abide, you can stay stable, you can center, you can stabilize your consciousness, your attention more easily with this understanding and these tools in a state of power, a state of individuated freedom, power, total sovereignty, and a timeless one. It's a timeless sense of power. So that throughout the passing pictures of your life, as your life unfolds moment to moment to moment to moment, picture by picture by picture, experience by experience by experience, you're able to stay more timeless as if you're watching a movie. Now, not in a disassociated way per se, but just in a, a very powerful way. So those are the two aspects that I want to address more or less individually, distinctly. And then through that understanding, you'll see how they're very connected. They very much empower each other. And so uh, there's a blendedness there between God's universal or personally transcendent love, person transcendent love, and how that empowers the individuated witness, the individuated consciousness in its day-to-day -day experiences. Now, with these two tools combined, uh, anything becomes possible practically. So that's also an exciting part of it, that your life will be greatly empowered by this and your dreams will be ushered into manifestation much faster. So it's sort of a nice side effect. But the essence of this is initially how to tap into God's love. So let's take a deep breath together and relax your mind, relax your body as you exhale. I think it's time that we bring God back into people's lives in a fresh way, reinvigorate the love, the passion, the spirit of faith in a way that's not old, it's not just in textbooks written 2000 years ago, bastardized by people who heard it from people who heard it from people who heard it from people who own organizations that heard it from people who own organizations that heard it from people that own organizations that and so forth. To breathe fresh life into, in a sense, religion, and the outside of the negative connotations that this has developed. So sometimes people ask me, why do you use the word God? It's so outdated. It's got so many negative connotations associated with so many people but it's still a very universal word and almost in every country where you go if you use the word god people will know what you mean roughly of course everyone has their own ideas about it so if you then engage in a dialogue about what it is you'll get entirely different concepts however people know generally what you're referring to the word god is a very powerful word it's been it's been used for so long in so many ways for good and for bad however while we can use words as source, and I often do, or pure awareness, and I often do, or in intelligent infinity, and I often do, there is a unique power, there's a unique leverage that we have with the word God. We can leverage all that old stuff, we can leverage all that old bias, this sort of stuff, and we can reinvigorate it. We can refresh this understanding. So if you have any problems with the word God, just for your own sake, I ask you to kind of put that aside if you can. Let that be the first bias that you surrender back to God. Because if the word God stands in between you and God, then that's not a very practical thing. It's not a very helpful idea. So you want to experience God's love, but the moment you hear the word God, you kind of cringe. Um, it's, it's not ideal, right? It's like not liking your partner's name and then getting married to them. It's not very effective. So put that bias aside to the best of your ability. And just reappreciate. Let's uh, reconceive of the word God. Let's just reuse it in a fresh way. 
Now, so, but, but to clarify, when I say God, I do mean source. <laughs> I do mean that infinity. I do mean the one. And there is only one God. There are not two gods. Unless you want to call the human being a co-creator with that one infinite creator. I also often call God the creator because it has, um, it has a few benefits to call it the creator. I won't go into that right now. But so when I say the one infinite creator or the creator, when I say the one, when I say God, when I say pure awareness, I'm essentially giving different nuances, but I'm essentially speaking about the same essence. Now, the, the primary aspect I wish to focus on here, though, is not so much God itself, but it is God's love. And love is perhaps the closest direct experience, the closest fragrance, if you will, by which we can know the essence, which is God. So first of all, a distinction. The intention here is to help you be able to love as God loves. Now, first of all, some might wonder if this is possible. And in a sense, you could say it's it's barely possible, but it is barely possible. Meaning you can approach it, you can approximate it, you can get fairly close to it while you're in this human suit, while you're in this vehicle, this body, in this incarnate state, under the veil of this three-dimensional matrix. You can approximate it, you can get pretty close, you can get pretty darn close to unconditional love, and that's good enough. That's way beyond what's expected of us here in this playground, in this testing crucible that we call earthly life. So um, for all intents and purposes, for most intents and purposes, we could say that yes, it is possible to love very similar to how God loves. But there are a few requirements, which is what I want to kind of address in this introductory talk tonight.